Hello and welcome to Reboot Theater. I'm your host, The Invisible Man. What makes a classic film? Is it just popularity, or is it something more? Maybe it's a timeless story that people can relate to even years after its release. That's certainly the case with Dirty Dancing. This nostalgic 80s film features a love story between Baby, played by Jennifer Grey, and an older man named Johnny, played by Patrick Swayze. It features themes of love, forbidden desire, sexual awakening, and coming of age, which is probably why it's had such a lasting impact. So when ABC announced a remake was in the works, you know they would stay totally true to the spirit of the original. <laughs> yeah, right. When does that ever happen? This is the Dirty Dancing remake. Was this bad? I mean, I wasn't expecting great things from a remake, but god damn. The casting was terrible, it was horribly acted, the two leads had virtually no chemistry, and they even had the nerve to add side plots. Yeah, because if there was one thing the original movie was missing, it's side plots. Nobody asked for that! But how much extra time did those side plots take anyway? An extra 10 minutes? Maybe 15? Nope. There are so many pointless side plots in this movie, it's now an extra 30 minutes longer! 30 minutes! They added a half an hour of filler to this movie, which I assume was done just so ABC could pad out their 3 hour runtime. How did this movie go so wrong? Prepare to lose the time of your life as we find out. This is Dirty Dancing. The movie opens with our main character, Baby, in New York City attending a Broadway production of Dirty Dancing. So now it's a play within a movie? Yeah, cause that worked so well for the last remake that tried that! We meet our lead actress, Abigail Breslin, because she definitely resembles the original character, as she stands in front of the worst green screen since Jim Henson's Labyrinth. Really guys? Really? I'm just a punk kid doing videos in my basement, and even I can do better effects than that. And half the time, you can see through parts of my body. I mean, I'm on a budget, but what's your excuse? That is the worst effect I have ever seen! Moving on, Baby sits down to the play based on her life and has a flashback to the summer she met Johnny. We then meet her sister, played by Sarah Hyland, who I am completely convinced should have played the role of Baby. Piano player. Get real, baby. He's cute. So are puppies, but I'm not gonna date one. Why would you sideline her as the sidekick? Now, before we get too deep into things, I feel compelled to mention that both of these young women were severely harassed and body shamed when this movie was announced. People thought Breslin was too fat, and they thought Highland was too skinny. So you don't like thick girls, and you don't like thin girls. What do you like, internet? WHEN ARE YOU SATISFIED?! And guess what? The only reason you would body shame someone else is if you're insecure about your own body. You're just a bunch of cowards hiding behind keyboards, so SHUT UP! Sarah Hyland is a perfectly healthy weight, and I can understand why people would be skeptical about Abigail Breslin playing a role that was previously played by a thinner actress. Particularly the lift scene, but we'll get to that. But I choose to judge people on talent, not on pant size. So I will not be commenting on Ms. Breslin's weight. I think everyone else has done that far too much already. They arrive at the Catskills Resort with their parents, played by Bruce Greenwood and Deborah Messing. And I hope you like all these characters because they will be showing up a lot. And I mean a lot! Some might say they steal screen time from the actual story between the two leads and contribute nothing of value. I mean, who didn't always wonder what Lisa's summer romance was like? And everybody wants to know more about the marriage problems between Baby's parents. Wait, what's that? You don't care! You never did! No shit! But hey, at least we still got some cool dance moves to look forward to, right? Uh, why are they singing? They never sang in the original, why are they singing here? Okay, so apparently the network decided to make this a musical for no apparent reason. Uh, I'll just take it as it comes. So then Baby meets Johnny for the first time, played by newcomer Cole Pratz. And guess how bland their acting is. What's she doing here, Billy? I carried this watermelon. What's your name? Baby. 
somewhere between cardboard and dry toast. Now, I can understand Pratt's acting like this because he's relatively new to the acting game. He doesn't have a lot of experience, which makes it even stranger they would cast him for such an iconic role, but more to the point, Abigail Brislin has been in a lot of movies. She has experience, so I expect more from her than... I carried his watermelon. So bad. Oh, so bad. Then the plot is the one you know. Minor changes here and there, but nothing too drastic. Penny gets pregnant, has an abortion, Jake blames Johnny for getting her pregnant even though he didn't do anything, and of course, Baby takes dance lessons with Johnny so she can fill in for Penny while she recovers. Then when the big day approaches, having done all that rigorous hard work for hours and hours each day, somehow, that sweet little girl... Dances like she's had no training at all. Really, guys? You're serious with this. Okay, okay. I can take the pointless side plots. I can take the strange casting choices. I can even take the fact that the editors are so bland you can replace them with cardboard cutouts and no one would notice the difference. But if there is one thing, one thing you have to have in Dirty Dancing, it's good dancing! I can't believe I had to explain this to you people! This is abysmal! This is like, ugh. I've seen better dancing in a middle school play! Why would you cast someone in a dancing movie if they can't dance? I mean, seriously, this is so bad! It's right there in the name, guys. Dirty Dancing. The dancing is the movie's main attraction! And I've seen eight-year-olds with more talent than this. For me, this was the final straw. I know Swayze and Grace at the bar pretty high, so they had big shoes to fill. But the dancing here is just a train wreck! This could be love wow, I didn't know you could walk in a circle. How impressive. In fact, let's play a game called Original vs. Ripoff. Original? Rip off. Original. The one thing I can't Rip off. The one thing I can't get enough of. Original. This could be Rip off. This could be love because she was already on the ground. Why did you need to lift her up if you were just gonna put her back down again? None of this makes sense. None of it. Including how a man of average strength can lift a girl that size. I'm not trying to make a fat joke. I'm just being realistic here. How would that work? Oh, that's right, it doesn't work. He drops her like a rock after three seconds. But at least it can't get any worse, right? Okay. No. Just. Stop! You are at the point of no return. You just passed the windmill, and this train wreck will crash and burn. <laughs> Guys, there's only so much. There's only so much bullshit you can get away with, and you just crossed the line. Then the movie ends with a fade out on our two leads, who are implied to continue their summer romance and live their lives together. Nope. We're gonna rip off La La Land! Baby. Hi. Hey. Mommy! Mommy! Hey, who's this? Johnny's daughter, perhaps? Sorry, she disappeared on me. Oh no, it's not Johnny's daughter, it's this knucklehead's, who apparently Baby ended up with. 
So yeah, I hope you weren't looking for a satisfying ending, because it was just like the rest of the film. DOOMED FROM THE START! Oh god, this is bad. The whole movie is a train wreck from start to finish. Now granted, in some respects it does take itself a little more seriously than a typical TV movie. You can tell by the frame rate that this is an actual film someone spent time making, and it looks like something I would go see in the theater. But I'm glad I didn't pay to see this because this was a tremendous letdown. Nobody asked for this! Nobody wanted this movie remade! And you do not recast Patrick Swayze in the role he was born to play! That would be like recasting Tim Curry in the Rocky Horror Picture Show! Oh god. I just said it up, didn't I? Ugh. Oh great. Well, now I have to review that one too. Stay tuned for that review this October. I'm the Invisible Man, and when there's a crappy remake, I got it covered. <laughs>